Hello and welcome, my name is Dr. Demix and this is Total War Warhammer 2 and today we're starting off a brand new legendary campaign uh, playing High Elves and specifically Lothurn on battle difficulty very hard so we're ramping the difficulty right up and today we'll be playing the SFO Steel Faith Overhaul mod uh, also known as Grimhold and uh, we'll be kicking it off right now. I wanted to start with something a little bit easier and uh, quite well known for my first SFO Legendary Very Hard Challenge. I have played on this difficulty before and got wiped out quite significantly. The SFO differs very greatly from the normal game um, on which I'm used to the Legendary Very Hard difficulty. Um, but the early game tends to be quite challenging on this. I haven't played this at all, or high elves at all on SFO, so it'll be an interesting challenge. So uh, without further ado, let's jump into it and see how I get on. Glory to you, Prince Tyrion, mightiest of the Asser, gatekeeper of Altwen. The Tuki threat is at your very door. Eaten is occupied. You must purge this menace. You are not alone in your fight against the insidious Tuki. Other Asser houses inhabit Altwen. They could be allies or foes, if you will. Nagarond looms. Sending constant threats against Altwan. Even now, they establish footholds within sacred lands. Others of your kind will surely fight back, but can they be trusted to succeed? The inner and outer kingdoms must unify, but beyond the shores of Altwan, where should the mighty elves go? The question is put to you, Tyrion. Okay, let's do it. How they play. So the High Elves use uh, influence to get better lords and amongst other things also to uh, influence diplomacy and make people like them or uh, others dislike each others. Um, and we also get line of sight from trade agreements and trade benefits us greatly. So this is just the Mortal Empires campaign of course so um, straightforward objectives Car uh, currently to Raise, occupy, loot, or sack. Zero out of four. Uh, Neighbouring settlements. And let's check our win conditions for this. We'll go for the short campaign victory. Control all provinces of Ulthuan, either by direct ownership or through vassals and military allies. Destroy the Dark Elves, effectively. There are two main factions. And control eight of the following settlements through direct ownership, which is pretty much... This is pretty much shared between every single campaign. This objective here is all these main cities, you just need to control eight of them. And ensure that two of the following buildings have been constructed, which is obviously unique to the High Elves here. Sacred Flame of Assyrian and Gates of Lothurn. Well, they are in Lothurn themselves. I don't know where this is, Sacred Flame of Assyrian. Um, but I'm sure we'll find it soon enough. I tend to always build the, um, the rare buildings, the pink ones. So um, I can't imagine that I'll miss it. Gates of Lothurn, level five. So let's uh, go straight ahead and upgrade Lothurn. 2,000 gold there. Noble son of Ulthuan. We'll take our noble and we'll put him into Tyrion's army. I'll share my experience. Shield against the darkness. And then where we'll go with Tyrion, Short I'm not sight. sure. Potentially try to set up an ambush here. Shield against the darkness. 35% chance. Not a great chance of ambushing. Should we do that? Um, so we are playing SFO, and clearly the starting. Ill armies here are actually not bad at all. Six. Ridiculous. Nine men against our eight, but I imagine we have a little bit more of an elite advantage. So let's move here. On the edge, just to show... Just to be a bit threatening, I guess. And then recruit two spears and one archer. Now let's check our diplomacy, see if we can initiate trades with anyone early. Non-aggression pack, that would be good. And trade? If you wish. Wonderful. And Illyrian? I cannot do this. Not interested. I will hold my hatred for your <laughs> Tyrannoch haters. And uh not making any apologies about that. <laughs> okay, I think that's all we can do for this turn. Let's pass the turn here. Let me sort out the uh, the turn camera camera uh, so we'll do allied factions we don't really care about what they're up to enemy factions uh, we'll do animation speed fast and neutral 
off as well. There you go. Should speed up the turn times. So one thing I've realized straight away is uh sorry, up on the faction white capture. So this is an SFO this is an SS SFO feature. It caps the elite units so that you can't spam them, making for more balanced battles. And I would always recommend using the recommended settings, which are faction wide. Which means you can still spread them out, so for example I might want Tyrion to have a load of Swordmasters of Hoth just to make him have all the elites and him to have an overwhelmingly overpowered army, or I could spread those units out among each uh, army that I have. So I like that one. Um, sorry, what I was saying, I, I just realised he's no. colonising the Shrine of Assyrian there, and that's the undoubtedly where we're going to build that uh, building, the Flame of Assyrian, that's in our wind conditions. So there we go, straight away there's the, uh, the buildings we need, so that's not difficult. Of the um, I don't know how we are going to take the Tower of Lycian anytime soon. I think we'll take one more turn of recruitment. I think we'll take two archers here. We can't. I'll take one more archer instead because high elf archers are incredibly strong. And then we'll just use our infantry smart. Smartly? Smart? Not sure. <laughs> Intelligently. That fits better. Um, so he won't be helping anytime soon. Hopefully we can attack next turn. 7 plus 9 makes for 16. Champion and we will have 13. Um, potentially doable. Not sure. Certainly our money isn't great. You know what I should be doing? I should be garrisoning. I should have been doing this since the start. Because in SFO, when you're garrisoned, you cost less money. Your army costs less money to maintain. Interesting start locations compared to the normal game. Um, which of course allows you to have a fight straight away, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I've played it though, so I could be wrong. Um, the fact that the armies actually start inside the... The Tower of Lycian, so you can't attack straight away. It feels uh, quite strange, actually. I'm not used to not having a battle on the first turn. What orders? Uh, it doesn't matter. It's really not going to affect us in this playthrough. Oh, wow. Now a 13-man garrison. Oh, they managed to get a wall up. Well, that complicates the entire game severely. Ill considered. Alariel's champion. Seems really strange. Really strange start that we just have to sit and camp. I don't see what else we can do. Ulf one's defender. 11 men plus 7, 18 man garrison, potentially going to beat that, but it's still outnumber us, again, Ready to serve. by quite a lot, I and mean, when you're playing on very hard difficulty, it matters a lot, but um, let's give this a go, I feel like we can't sit around all day, so we're going to win a battle somewhere. Orion. Okay, so nothing too elite, and as we know, they colonized the Shrine of Assyrian, so they're a little bit winded on these trips, but still, gotta watch out for their Black Orc Corsair, their Shades, who of course have stocks, so that makes them invisible, and their Harpies, who have Vanguard deploy. I lust for battle! And of course, we'll try and have Tyrion take out their general. Um, as early as possible to hurt their morale.
And we'll try and make the best use of our chariots. I wish we had uh, melee chariots instead of ranged ones. I, I find that the, the chariots in uh, SFO are incredibly strong. Um, way better than the, the normal games. The charge bonus 70 even on... on uh, oh, they are melee chariots. Excellent. They, I beg your pardon then. I beg your pardon. The um, I've done an orc SFO playthrough and they have 120 charge bonus as standard on their warboard chariots, which is absolutely awesome. And their charges really devastate the, uh, the enemy lines. Let's use this to our advantage, this terrain here, so we'll uh, stack up on it. Pop one melee infantry here, one here, and one here. Try and keep them nice and spread. Little gaps in between. I'll put these guys here, in fact. It may look messy, but it, it, it actually makes the AI come at you quite nicely for your archers to shoot at them. We just line our archers up like this. And then what we try and do is we get the enemy infantry to engage and then we pull our infantry round to the left or to the right so that the um, archers are firing on them. Preferably you pull them round to the right because then that exposes the unshielded side which is the right hand side of the enemies and that does matter. Um, it actually takes into account what way the enemies are facing so that if they're face if you're facing their unshielded side with their arrows they don't get the benefit of their shields potentially blocking your missiles so it does make a big difference there Battle calls. Uh, we can't hide them in their chariots are pretty hard to hide um, so we'll just have them uh, standing out in the open they haven't got any art uh, they have sorry I beg your pardon they haven't got any um, cavalry of their own so hopefully that'll be our massive advantage in this battle. See if we can get Philly in here and be hidden. We go. No, that doesn't appear like it. Defender of It will be done for duty. Probably going to be using the cavalry the most, so thought I'd change the. Uh, Gripping there. Noble. Ithilmar chariots. So they're sending some units to deal with us, and they're being wary of us with their harpies. But I can't imagine they'll do too well, regardless. Oh. Archers. Orders understood. Let's keep our lines quite deep. We just want to expose as little of ourselves to their melee as possible. Oh dear. Good turn. Let's just keep running for now. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send them like that. Good. That's absolutely fine. That's all their harpies going to be dead instantly. Let's have them fire on them. Let's try and take care of as much of their archers as possible first. Got our cavalry to run straight across here. We really want our uh, melee to take the hit. As you say, excellent. And then if we can, oh, there we go. Shift them around to the to the right like this. And fire on these. We go without fail. Archers, understood, understood. As you say, move. Some of these guys in the back of them. And 
and we've almost entirely dealt with the archers. Let's use you guys to take out these Black Art Corsairs, because from close range like that, in the back of our White Lions of Grace, they're going to do some serious damage, but not if we take them out very quickly with all our archers. And there they go, there the archers go, just right, the chariots just straight through those lines, and we'll keep pushing them straight forward into the back of these lines. And that is a fantastic charge. Need to keep microing our chariots so that they don't get stuck anywhere. Let's put our archers in guard mode so they don't follow the uh, follow the routing units and instead concentrate on the ones they should. You guys fire on these. Let's get. Uh, I don't actually know what this is. Let's give them. That seems okay. Should him on the dark shards. They ended up getting engaged in melee here, which is actually quite annoying. Let's pull our cavalry out there, press J, which will line them back up. Good charge by our chariots. Not even being caught by the spears. Look at the strength of them. They just push right through, not bothered, even through the spearmen. Silver Let's recharge this with our horses. We've pretty much taken out their infantry. Let's have them fire on these guys. Yeah, they're going to turn to face the chariots. That's perfect timing. Let's bring our horses back out. And save our archers from getting charged in the back, although they're not too dangerous, these spears. They don't really have a charge bonus, so it shouldn't really hurt us. Oh, that's hurting our chariots, so that prolonged combat. Let's get them out of there. Let's pull back and reform the groups a bit. I don't know where my melee have got off to, but let's just pull them back entirely and try and get our formation back together. Let's get Tyrion onto the enemy general. Actually, no, he hasn't finished off with. I thought he finished them by now, but he hasn't. Oh, we're letting our cavalry get charged. That's really stupid. Let's put our chariots into these. If we put these guys in melee with the cav with the uh, with the dread spears, then we'll get the cavalry to uh, re-engage them. Actually, we'll bring the cavalry over here. Uh, no, we will rear charge. We will rear charge if they're going to settle up and fight. That's perfect. These guys can fight them in melee. Their lord is dead. That'll probably be the end of them, to be honest. Let's hit these guys in the back. Get a good cavalry charge. There we go. Ho ho ho! <laughs> a strong finish. What a charge that was. Um, a little bit messy. I could have fought that a little bit better. I, I could have brought my cavalry in definitely more efficiently. I think the infantry did their job well. Apart from the guys on the left, I shouldn't have sent them out. I should have concentrated my archer fire more on the archers over on this side so that they... Um, because they ended up being wasted. It's not a fight that they like charging out and getting shot down by all the archers. Um, so we can end this battle here, we don't need to chase them down, because uh, it's a settlement battle, and we'll occupy that peacefully, definitely, because it's one of our own. Losses 277, I think we lost more health than we did actual units, um, looking at a lot of the, uh, the health bars there. 118 for the... the Silver Helms, 98 for the Ithamar Chariots. I didn't use the Chariots to their full capacity, mainly because they had more archers than they did infantry. Or certainly just as much, so they spent a lot of time, instead of Ancestors hammer and anviling, they spent a lot of time just uh, running around killing archers, which is not their best use. They're better hitting the back of infantry. They do some serious damage. Thieves and usurpers. Let's occupy that peacefully. So Lothurn, I'm not too scared for Lothurn. Should be fine because it has a 14-man garrison naturally, and it's a settlement, it has walls. Um, they shouldn't be able to recruit now, because I just took their settlement that allows them to, so that's an advantage as well. 
Um, meanwhile, we will recruit. So we will take... Uh, I think we'll take one more Spearman, one more Archer. Sounds good to me. Take Root Marcher first. Now, for the first six levels, we get two skill points in SFO, which is very handy. So we'll take uh, Root Marcher, and I will take... I'm not sure what I'll take for the second thing. I'd like Quartermaster, so I would like to... Um... Let's take this. I think gold is a, is quite a it's quite an important thing money management early in the game. Later on, it, it becomes very very strong, but early on in SFO, it's very tight. Let's check what Illyrian think of us now. I cannot do this. Still the same deal. Pass our turn there then. Ah, I didn't expect that. That's cheeky. Uh, we'll still be taking the Shrine of Assyrian on this turn. I don't think he can reach Angarial on his next turn. So we should be okay to take Shrine of Assyrian off him as well. Well, it's got a weak 5-man garrison. And then that leaves us with just the Tower of Lycian to take. It should not be a, a much of an issue. My loyalty is rewarded. Beastmen rising. Do we want the beastmen in the game? Let's say yes. Keep that difficulty up there. Although we all hate the beastmen just appearing and destroying our settlements. Safari. Not fans of us, it turns out. What That's okay. We'll get over it. Ah, we didn't upgrade ally. this fellow. Uh, let's give him Weapon Master and Valor of Ages. Check how far this guy can move. Ridiculous. Well, with his raiding stance, quite far actually. I'm not sure. Servant he may be able to if he can. It's not a big loss. It would be annoying, but it's not the worst victory. thing in the world. I'd rather keep. I'd rather take the chance to and try to finish the uh, shrine or take the oh, shrine of Assyrian, because again, he's just built a uh, barracks there just in the last second. He's just built a barracks, so he'll My start recruiting if I don't. Grows. Which would also be an issue. Defender of Ultwine. Another level for Tyrion. Let's maximize the training and bonded service. Cheaper archers now. We might as well maximize our army while we have the chance, because we're probably going to go to war. I, I think we'll take out Safari early on. Um, it's quite an easily defensible area. There's no mountain passes on this side, and they hate us, so it seems logical to take them out. Um, we're also, oh wow, we're at war with these guys as well. Ivris. So I might have to concentrate on them first. In fact, almost certainly we'll end up concentrating on them first. Um, so yes, this turn we'll replenish here, recruit a little bit more. Next turn we'll sail over to here and threaten Tyler Lysi and hopefully wipe them out. He should retreat, I imagine. Short sight. I can't imagine him not. Um, let's just leave this in in the sh in the shrine of Assyrian. Makes more sense. Although if we delete it here, we lose a two-man garrison. Spearmen and archers. Never. That's okay. We can afford to do that. What orders? And pass our turn there. Hopefully secure this province uh, in the next two turns, and then we will head straight to the Ivris who we're at war with. So we need to capitalize on any early gains as soon as possible, because if you don't keep steamrolling in this game, on this difficulty, you just lose your advantage and get annihilated by the creeping enemies. The one thing I would say, ah good, he moved back, there we go, is that the diplomacy in SFO tends to be um, a bit easier to manage. It's a lot less likely for random countries to declare war on you. Countries, um, races, <laughs> individuals, teams, I can't remember, what am I trying to say here? But yes, it's much, much um, 
more ran uh, rare for them to just to randomly declare war on you than it is in the normal game, which kind of makes diplomacy easier. Um, so it, it can become quite stale later on. So in order to keep it interesting, I think you have to really keep the momentum up. Um, as I said, the early game can be quite challenging, but um, later on in SFO, I found that it can, if you're not careful, get quit, get stale quickly. I never tire. Oh, we can't just go from here. That looks like a beach to me. <laughs> Elf ones Obviously, defend. I am wrong. Can we reach Elf One in one turn? No. Champion of the Ever Queen. Okay, well, we'll march and we'll go here. Might take three turns to get there now, though. Setting sail. There we are, as close as we can be. I don't think he'll engage with nine troops against my 18. In fact, I highly doubt it. <laughs> Okay, uh, onwards to Tarl I see, and I don't think we can attack it this turn because we have to land and then attack it next turn. But oh, that's annoying! Negative growth this early. Servant of the king. Let's see how I we get on. Oh, we can queen. indeed reach. Excellent. So this should be a good battle. Attack. To victory, do what you must. Wow, we and they ha okay. They have dark riders. Two of them, and they're shielded, so they'll be. A bit uh, safer from our cavalry, uh, from our archers than we would have liked. Um, they have dark shards, one, two, three, four, plus dark shards with shields, one, two, three, four. So we need to make sure our archers concentrate first on the dark shards with our shields, just because they'll die quicker. Um, armor piercing missiles is, is is very deadly as well, but their range is not as good as ours as well. So we need to make sure we maximize um, our our archer advantage, which is the range. And uh, then just make sure we concentrate our fire as much as we can on the dark shards, but not ignore the cavalry. Um, we haven't got anything that can really go blow for blow with their cavalry. I think we'll lose the cavalry engagement if we engage ours with them, to be honest. So we just need to be careful. They cause fear as well. Wow, we. Tough unit. Anyway, this should Bring be a good battle. Let's do it. Battle. And hopefully we win this and close out the Cult of Excess from Ulthawan. Or Etain? I think the province is called Etain. Etain. So we are outnumbered here, so we need to make sure we play it smart. Okay, I imagine they'll come head on. I want to stay clear of the trees. Right, so let's ha let's line up here. So we'll line up our bows first, nicely, like that. Keep them quite condensed, just because the cavalry are, are going to try and flank us, that's for absolutely certain. And so if we have them condensed, that's less of a line to try to cover against. So I'll put a spearman like this. And then we'll have them lined up like this. Loyal. Received. So I'll need to spread out the remaining ones in a second, because I, I really like this little hill we have here, it's quite nice. Cavalry, uh, we'll put them in the woods if we can, keep them hidden. No, we can't. There we go. 
chariots are just impossible to hide. Okay, well, in that case, there's no point trying to hide them, so we'll have them over here instead. Now, my my one concern is that they will be gunning for my uh, cavalry with theirs. Guard mode. And we'll have Tyrion here and our noble here. <clears throat> And that will do for now. Let's put them here anyway. I'll have the chariots still at the back and it might keep them hidden, who knows. <clears throat> it might keep them hidden. Right, let's start this battle. Get our final spearmen into position. They have one cavalry on each side, do they? That's handy. I hope that... Uh, I keep they come flying forward. They are. Yes, open fire, guys. Open fire and take out as many as possible. As quickly as possible. Oh, that's excellent for us. They're wasting those cavalry. Let's hang left. I reckon they're... Oh, there they are. I can see them. They're Dark Riders with shields. Okay, this is great for us. Absolutely fantastic. Need to make sure they get shattered. If possible. They are, they're shattered. Excellent. They were shields? Okay. As we said, concentrate the ones without shields first. Oh wow! Did not expect that of all things. I'm not gonna lie. Destroy them. Let's make sure we don't get charged from the side. Move these guys in as quickly as possible. We should win this as long as that doesn't happen. Archers firing on us. Archers, kill them to battle. Okay, we were winning the melee, but we have to pull out because we can't take that level of archer fire. Not at all. That's okay, we should be able to run away from this and instead gauge here. Back of this, where's my noble? What are you doing? Get in here and help the men. Oh, this is not good for the cavalry. We really needed them to not be getting hit like this. Let's bring them close to our archers. And as soon as they're close enough, we're going to charge these archers and we're going to have these archers fire at their cav. Try and get rid of them. They've stopped. They have stopped. Are on them instead then. Let's try and route this right flank. Let's get the chariots to push through and hit these dread spears as well. Be firing at. There's some dark shards with no shields. Let's take them out. Excellent. Let's shift left. Let's have these chariots taking out as much of the... There we go, their cavalry are in range now. They charged ours. I don't want to stand and hold that though, so hopefully we can just get a bunch of them with our archers while they're moving. Our Ithilmar chariots should do excellent against their dark... They should just be running through them rampant, to be honest. Let's just keep them moving. Okay, we're not going to hit that. We're going to hit the back of these guys instead. Let's just keep our chariots moving. If we just keep them traveling back and forth between all the archers. Meanwhile, excellent charge coming in here. Let's try and take out their uh, their lords. Earthwind's fine. He's doing a good job. Let's keep our chariots on the move. Alright, don't waste this arrow. Don't waste the ammo now. Be careful. We've lost our cavalry here. That's not good. 
Let's get our spears there. Oh, they're still running around with their horses. Let's just make sure we don't get uh, a little cavalry charge in the back. That would be devastating. Good response from our archers and spears there. Stop their dark riders. And if we can get really lucky, we might shatter them here. If they can just keep attacking them there. Let's keep our Ithilmar chariots doing an excellent job with the dark shards. That's four units of dark shards that are keeping occupied there, so they're really doing a fantastic job. Champion of Alaria. As is Ulthuan. Ulthuan Tyrion. Let's get these guys in the back here. Our cavalry have rallied. Their cavalry are gone. Let's bring our archers forward to hit any routing squads. Keep them from coming back and uh, hitting our troops, which will be sweeping over the uh, battleground and getting hit in the back from from getting hit in the back, I should say. And look at this, our chariots are doing a fantastic job. Just keep them moving. See what they tend to do is they lose their charge bonus and they'll just stay in combat. But if we just pull them out a little bit and re-engage them, they'll get that charge bonus right back. Let's pull them up here. Send these guys after these dark shards. Tyrion will be all right. There's a bit of chaos now in the middle here, but we should be okay, I think. Let's pull these chariots into these dark shards, and I think that's the mass mass route now. That is the mass route. Excellent. And that is the cult of excess wiped off of a tain in an excellent battle. Really well held by our spearmen. Luckily we're fighting other elfin spearmen, so they're um, not particularly strong. So it's a very prolonged engagement on the front lines there. Archers did well. Ithil Mochar is 123, 105 for the Silver Helms. Let's try and mop up a bit of free XP here. And look at all these, all these spearmen headed out there. So one good reason to chase them down can be that um, it determines what kind of victory you get based on your losses versus their losses. So they are actually got a lot of routing units here. So even though we've won this quite considerably given that we've routed a lot of their units by using clever um, flanking maneuvers to make sure that they route, it'll still say it's only a close victory, I imagine. It might even be Peric. So let's see here. Close victory. And that uh, changes the amount of XP that your Lord gets. So... It does make a difference to the battle, uh, to the game in general. It's better to obviously have a decisive victory. Did a number on their dark shards, which is excellent. Three, four, one, and two. A glorious victory. Indeed it is a glorious victory. 823 gold, excellent. Gained a war banner. Claim and we'll occupy that. Value. I think the Tower of Lycian is value enough. Okay, and we've secured Etain and Cold of Excess is destroyed. Excellent. The people are rested. So, I'm going to end the episode there, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to see more, please do subscribe, give the video a like. It lets me know that I'm doing the right thing. Uh, leave a comment below, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye.